Before I mentioned how having improperly prepared UV texture space can lead to texture stretching or illegible textures, well, here's an example of that. In this scene, I have two polygon primitive surfaces. They started out as primitive planes, but were given the undulations through modeling. One is relatively flat and one is bent in a U shape. They're both assigned to a material with a checker texture. You can see by this view how the checker is almost illegible. It's all distorted. Now the reason I can see this in this view panel is I have hardware texturing on. So again, smooth shade all and hardware texturing are turned on. Let's look at the actual texture though. So back to the hypershade. Now I'll go ahead and graph network the blend they're assigned to. And here's the checker texture. You can see it has two black squares and two white squares. The reason it only has a total of four squares is the tiling has been changed. If I go to the place to the texture node, I can see the repeat UV on this checker texture is 1-1. One, one. In any case, it's obvious that the checker texture is distorted here in the view panel. Why is that? Well, it's because UV texture space is not properly prepared. In fact, if I close the attribute editor and then go to UV texture editor, we'll take a look. I'll pick this surface, go up to window UV texture editor. And there it is. For one, you can see the checker texture in UV texture editor because that was mapped to the color of that material. Let me just hide that for now by clicking off this button up here at the top. And here's the UV texture space for that surface. It's a mess. If I turn back on that texture, for one, we can see that many of the faces and edges of the surface hang outside the valid 0 to 1 UV texture space. Here, this dark gray space, the space where the texture actually appears. So all these faces out here on the edges are overhanging. That means they automatically get a repeated part of the texture. We don't have any control over that. They simply get the texture repeated. Now you can imagine that the texture repeats evenly. So if you have the texture one time here, you have it one time here also, and one time here, and one time here. Another problem is some of the faces are overlapping. If you look in this area, you can see that there's a whole mess of edges, and therefore a whole mess of faces that overlap. That means they get the exact same part of the texture. All these faces in this area get the same black of the checker texture. So the fact that the faces are overlapping the edges of the valid UV texture space, and the fact that faces are overlapping, that's a really bad sign. And that's going to give you a result like this. It's going to be a mess inside the view panel if you look at the uh, shaded view, but also if you render it out, if I close the UV texture editor and render this out for real, it's just as messy there. So what do you do? So as I mentioned before, there are tools you can use to fix the UVs. And the most important ones are the projection tools that allow you to project new UVs. And those come in different flavors based on the style of projection. We're going to start with the planar projection in this video and then move on to the other ones in later videos. Now planar is a good candidate for the shape I currently have selected because it's basically a planar shape or in the shape of the plane. So what you do is try to project new UVs onto this Whenever you project, the old UVs are overwritten and you have new UV information. And therefore, ideally, you'll have a nice UV texture space when you're done and the texture will appear correct. So how do we do that? Well, just select the surface, then make sure you're on the polygons menu set, and then go up to create UVs. And the first five or six options are various mapping options. So the first one's planar mapping. So what I'll do is, while the surface is selected, click on Planar Mapping. And as soon as I do that, I'll get an orange border along my surface to show the tool is working. And also I'll get a projection handle. Now I might have to move my camera to see it, but there it is. Now for a planar projection, it's going to be basically a square rectangular shape. Plus I'll have special handles at the corners. Now at this point, they see that handle, I need to manipulate it to help orient that projection so it makes sense for the surface. Now, once that appears, I can always go back to my UV texture editor and see what's going on. And in fact, you'll see that projection handle also inside the UV texture editor. It also has corner boxes to manipulate that manipulator plus transform handles. Now with the planar mapping, what you want to do is orient it so it runs in the same direction as your planar surface. 
Right now, it's come in perpendicular. You can see it runs perpendicular to my actual surface. Now, imagine that the UV information is being projected from that manipulator, so you really want it to be parallel. So there's a couple of ways you can manipulate it. Now, you don't want to go to another tool. You want to take care of this before you go to another tool or deselect, because once you do that, this manipulator will disappear. Because what you can do is either interactively move or scale this handle slash manipulator here in the view panel, or do it here in the UV texture editor, or do both. So the first thing we really want to do is rotate this manipulator so it's parallel to the surface. We can do that by moving your camera around and looking for this little red T-shape at the corner. This T-shape will put you into a different transformation mode, which allows you to rotate that manipulator. So I click that T-shape. You have to be careful if you click off by accident, it'll go away. Now, I accidentally clicked off, so I'm going to undo. If you do Control-Z, it should come back. You have to be careful, it's a little tricky to get. So if I zoom in here and click right on that T-handle, if I click right on it, it should turn yellow. Once it turns yellow, you'll see I have a more traditional set of transformation handles here. I have move handles, I have scale handles, and a rotate circle. So what you can do is click on any of these transform handles to try to, for instance, rotate. So if I click on the rotation circle, I'll go to the traditional rotation handle there, and then I can rotate that projection. And in fact, while I have my hardware texturing on, you can see that the shaded view of the texture updates. So now my manipulator is more parallel to my surface, the texture starts to make sense. Now you see it's repeating more times than I really want, and the view panel view is a pretty accurate view of how that projection is working. What I need to do now is make that projection manipulator wider so it's equally wide. Because really you want that manipulator to cover the same area as your surface. You want the manipulator to be the same size as your surface, roughly. So now I can go and scale the manipulator. I'll grab that little red scale box and scale it. Now you might find that using this manipulator is a little tricky. In fact, you'll see that sometimes I miss grabbing the correct handle, like right now. I'm trying to scale, but I'm accidentally grabbing the rotate component. Now there's another trick that'll give you a little bit more control. I'm gonna hide the UV texture editor for a second and go to the attribute editor. Go to the attribute editor while I'm still manipulating this handle, you'll see that there are some attributes that might make your life a little bit easier. In fact, for one, there's rotate. You can rotate that manipulator right here and be more accurate. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and enter values here. I'm gonna rotate 90 in X, 90 for Y, and zero for Z. So when you enter values here, the manipulator will move, and that way you can be more accurate by using the attribute editor. So by rotating it to 90, 90, zero, in this case, it's parallel. Now again, if you want to open up the scene, this is in the working files folder under chapter nine. And this particular file is called fabric.mb. So that's a rotation. You can also change the dimensions in terms of its width and height. In fact, there's a projection width and a projection height right here. So if I'm going to make this projection manipulator longer, I can change projection height by moving the slider. And once the projection manipulator gets to be roughly the same size as my surface, you'll see that the checker starts to look like the actual texture. In other words, there's two black squares and two white squares. So now I've successfully rotated and changed the scale of that manipulator. So the projection makes sense. And because the manipulator is parallel to the surface, it's not stretching or smearing. Now, if I go ahead at this point and try to do a render, I have a pretty nice even projection, which means my checker looks nice in this situation. So again, what you do is pick the surface, go up to create UVs, and choose planar mapping. Now, if you find it difficult to interactively use a manipulator, what you can do is go to the attribute editor. Now, as soon as you click off and go to some other tool like select or simply unselect the service, you'll see the manipulator goes away. It's still there as history. If I press control A, pick the object once again, you'll see that that projection remains as a history node. It's listed as poly planar projection. That's the projection history right there. Now, if you click on that word, polyplanar projection, 
you can get the manipulator back. So until you delete the history on the surface, you can always go back to that projection and mess around with it some more. In fact, I can go ahead and scale it, for instance, if I want to change it. So again, if it goes away, if you accidentally click off of it, like click off surface, just select the surface once again, look for its history, in this case, polyplanar projection, click on that word, you'll get back to the various attributes. In fact, not only do you get the manipulator handle back in the view panel, but you also get the basic attributes right here. So if you wanted to go back and interactively change the rotation, you can do it right here. And this is true with a lot of projection nodes. When you click on the projection node name, you can get back to the attributes right here without having to go back to the attribute editor. So by using that projection, I've cleaned up the UVs on this plane. And now I can render and successfully have my checker pattern show up. Now, if I do want to delete the history, I can do that. If I go up to Edit, Delete by Type History, the UVs are frozen, the history goes away. Now, it's going to be a little bit more tricky with this bent piece of fabric over here. Because it's bent in the U, if I go ahead and try to do a projection on it, you'll see there are some issues. I go up to Create UV, Planar Mapping. I get my Planar Manipulator. And since it's selected, I can actually see the attributes right here in the channel box. So if I try to rotate it now and rotate in such a way that I did like on the previous fabric, it'll start to work, but I might have some issues. If I go to the UV texture editor here and hide my actual texture, if you look close, you can see that some parts of the surface are overlapping. Because it's been a U, the planar projection can't quite match the surface, and therefore I get an overlap here. So in that situation, what you can do is try one of the other projection tools, and we'll talk about those in later videos, including the cylindrical one, which should be more appropriate in this situation. But in any case, if you have a planar surface, using a planar mapping works well.